Welcome back everyone. My name is Mike. For those of you guys who are new here, for those of you guys who aren't new here, we typically film outside and today right now my neighborhood is recovering uh, from Hurricane Debbie and there are generators and chainsaws and everything else going on outside. So it is a cacophony of noise. So we came inside to do this video and uh, today we're going to be talking about the Trump assassination attempt. As what I'm recording this, it is the 10th. Uh, a slew of new body cam videos came out on the 9th. And what we're going to do today is sort of walk you through some of that, as well as a few pieces of information that have come out between my last video and yesterday to sort of uh, make the puzzle that is this case come together a little bit better. Of course, by the end of it, we're going to have more questions. Uh, unfortunately, the FBI, Secret Service, etc., they haven't given us a lot of answers at this point, but we're getting more from the body cam footage. The body cam footage certainly doesn't lie. However, it is only one piece of the puzzle, and uh, we're going to walk through that as well as some documents that Senator Grassley's office has put out. The first one here is going to be a timeline, and this timeline, what's important about this is that it was put together by a local law enforcement department, and it was submitted uh, to the department head at around 9 p.m. the evening of the shooting. Uh, that's important and significant for a couple reasons. Number one, uh, the people who were putting it together, the officers on the scene, their memories of what happened were fresh. Uh, additionally, their memories hadn't or were less likely to have been uh, tampered with by uh, the public reaction and things like that that happens after an event like this. So it's a pretty good document in terms of where people are positioned as well as uh, timeline of events. So we're not going to walk through the whole thing. I really want to get into the body cam footage, but I think it's important to kind of uh, give you guys an idea of what was happening happening on the ground according to the people who were there on the ground. So looking at the actual timeline itself, uh, you'll see there that the Beaver County ESU was in place and that's emergency services unit was in place. And then at 1030, the snipers are in place. Now where they're in place is behind the rooftop that uh, crooks would shoot from. Uh, both in the first floor as well as the second floor. We know that because, again, uh, documents from Senator Grassley have come out with photos of their sniper position inside the building, not on the rooftop, inside the building, uh, which that raises a bunch of questions. We've talked about this before, uh, but we're just going to accept that for now both on the first and second floor. Uh, additionally, the windows were cracked, but not all the way open in some of the photos that we see there, which is interesting uh, from a sniper perspective. Um, however, what it does say is that they did have coverage of the second floor as well as the first floor and you know all the vantage points that they could see from there. Additionally, from the text messages that we have, uh, have been uncovered rather, um, we know that there were three snipers assigned to that area. One of them had to leave sometime between 4 and 5 p.m. and did leave sometime between 4 and 5 p.m. So when the actual shooting happened, again, roughly 6.11, 6.11 with 30 seconds, depending on the actual badge cam that we're looking at, uh, when that happened, there was only two snipers available for that position. And as you'll see, there probably wasn't any actually in the position. But uh, getting back to the timeline here, you guys can see they're taking some photos of him. They're relaying what they're seeing, the suspicious person, the person with a rangefinder, all of those things, and they're relaying it back to their headquarters. And then they're confirming, you'll see this several times in here as well, they confirm that, that has been uh, distributed to command or something along those lines. And what that means to me um, is that very likely there was a command center set up and there's been conflicting reports in the media. Some are saying that there was one command center, which would make sense. Some are saying that there was two separate command centers. Uh, that wouldn't make a lot of sense because the whole point of a command center is to have one person from each agency with comms and radio communication to all the other officers that can then relay information via the different networks that are on site. Uh, however, there has been multiple reports both ways on that. So what actually happened, I don't know. But what we do know is that all this information was relayed to command. Theoretically, it should have been distributed to all the different agencies, and it probably wasn't based on what we know so far. Additionally, um, at 1806 here, this is a crucial piece of information. It says blank essentially went downstairs to talk to local law enforcement and let them know of, of the suspicious person there. And what you'll see here uh, via the body cam that we're about to, to show is that essentially this location was cut off into two different, well, multiple sectors, but um, one where essentially President Trump was speaking and everyone that went in attendance there was, uh, rather had gone through secret service screening with a magnetometer, checking for metal, those sorts of things. And then over at the AGR building where Cook shot from and where these officers are set up at, nobody there had to go through security because there was a fence around there, which again, as you guys have probably seen in the previous videos that we've done, uh, there was a gap in the fence that was pretty easily breachable if somebody actually wanted to. However, 
they were considering that to be the security perimeter. Uh, so crooks and everyone else in the crowd there didn't have to go through a perimeter to get to their position. And as you'll see, there was a ton of law enforcement out there. There was at least three different undercover or plain clothes officers. And there were multiple uniformed officers as well as in the actual building uh, where, I'm smiling, it's not funny, it's, it's unfortunate, it's just insane. Uh, in the actual building where crooks took the shots from, there was a local law enforcement SWAT team in that building as well. Um, so multiple uniformed and plain clothes officers surrounded the building. And for whatever reason, at 1806, one of the snipers goes down uh, to tell everyone that there's a suspicious person and relay his location. So if you guys actually saw some of the previous video that we rolled in and, and different videos here on the topic, you'll see that they were able to yell through the windows to different positions. So why they couldn't just yell to the officers that were down on the ground, the snipers that is, I don't know. However, they made that choice to abandon that sniper position. And from the video that we've seen later on, uh, this person, Greg, who has been identified, Greg Nickel, uh, he is seen uh, standing out in front of the main entrance of the AGR building without a weapon of any kind outside of his handgun. So most likely he not only left his sniper position, um, but also uh, left the weapons in place unsecured, which is obviously uh, kind of a no-no in the tactical community. And later on in the actual timeline, you'll see there that it is reported that uh, he essentially, either him or one of the other snipers had to go out and badge the other one into the building to open the door. So what we know by that is that both snipers, whether they be in the first or second floor, neither one of them were there at the time that Crooks took the shot. So that's kind of the insane timeline. There's a lot more to dig into that timeline, but that will be a video for another day. So with that, let's move on to the body cam footage. Before we get into the actual badge cam, one thing that's important to note is, again, there's multiple different law enforcement agencies on hand, and the 12 videos that were released on the 9th all came from Butler County or Butler Township. So uh, we have not seen the video from Beaver County yet. Uh, that is all outstanding and pending. Additionally, we haven't seen the Secret Service or the state police footage. So just saying that to say that again, what we're seeing here is a small portion of the pie as to what should already be out. Obviously it's not out yet and it's been coming up on a month now, unfortunately, since this happened and we still have so little amount of information that it is uh, suspicious if you could say. But anyway, getting into the actual timeline, the first footage that we actually see is at 6.08 p.m. And you can hear radio traffic saying someone's on the roof and then we continue forward to uh, 608 and then 40 seconds you'll see that somebody says on the radio see that dude running likely an indicator that he's moving across multiple different uh surfaces of the roof because they are all interconnected someone's on the roof What's up, man? I have the roof with white shorts. See that dude running? And uh, several reports, as well as the FBI director, our assistant director, testified that he actually went up on the far side of the compound or the building compound and then made his way across several different rooftops. Based on other footage that we've seen since then, uh, it definitely looks like that is what happened. So, again, at 6.08, uh, Radio traffic across the police scanner just comes across and says somebody's on the roof. And then at 6.08 and 40 seconds, somebody says, see that dude running across the police traffic. After that radio communication about the guy running across the roof, the officer pulls up in his patrol vehicle next to the building where the actual shooting happened. Unfortunately, because of the way the video was released, I don't know who made this call. There's a lot of weird cuts in there and we don't get to see a continual uh, view from this gentleman's camera. However, he parks his car and then we have another uh, camera view that was released but it's from the same guy i believe anyway and essentially he gets out and runs toward the towards the building and has another officer boost him up so if you guys remember the earlier reports that uh, a local officer tried to get on the roof and then crooks turned and pointed his weapon at him causing him to fall off the roof uh, this is that gentleman now earlier in previous videos, several uh, town representatives had said that he was injured, but as you'll see in the video here, he wasn't injured and he continued moving the entire time. Uh, however, at 6.10 and 39 seconds, uh, that police officer was boosted up and then comes back down after it reportedly Crooks oriented his weapon at him.
And after he gets back down, you guys can see he very easily, he doesn't appear to be injured in any way, moves out to the front of the building in terms of uh, between where Crooks was and where President Trump was. I, I'm guessing because that's higher ground and he was thinking he could get a shot at him. However, while he was out there, the shots rang out at, you know, 11 after and 30 seconds. You hear the initial three and then you hear the initial five and then the follow-up shot and then the long pause, like 10 seconds or something like that. And then the final one comes in. However, his body camera uh, audio is not running at that time. A lot of people ask questions about that and there's a lot of different body, body cameras rather out there and many of them have a delay. It's a preset delay based on the timeline of his it was very likely preset to 90 seconds so that's not like sketchy or an indicator that they're hiding something that tends to be how most body cams work it's somewhere between 30 seconds and two minutes of a delay so again not too crazy but we did have the audio from inside of his vehicle uh, of the actual shots ringing out Now, in the time between the shots ringing out, he went back to his vehicle to grab his AR-15. Honestly, weapons handling skills, not the greatest. I understand their stress and things like that, but definitely room for improvement. I'm not saying that to criticize the guy. I'm just saying because we can all learn from these videos. That's what these videos are for. Um, however, one thing to note that I know a lot of people are going to talk about if I don't point it out because I noticed it immediately the first time I watched this video is that at the 6.13 and 29 second mark, uh, you can see from his badge cam, it's oriented out to the right uh, where the water tower is and there appears to be it's hard to tell from the footage hopefully i'll put an arrow on it so you guys can see it but there appears to be either a motorcycle or a bicycle fleeing from the location or the vicinity of the water tower now i'm not saying anyone was there it's not what i'm saying i'm just saying to deny that and pretend like it didn't happen would also not be honest and truthful right so we just have to look at the evidence as we have it and make conclusions from there <laughs> very well could be that it was an attendee and they were just trying to get out of there uh, as soon as they can because just two minutes prior to that there was a shooting and attempted assassination of the president so it kind of makes sense that people would want to leave the area it also could make sense that it could be something else but i'm just pointing that out um, because i know again if we don't talk about it then people will talk about it and assume i'm trying to hide it which i am absolutely not trying to do uh, and then you'll see that we move on uh, throughout the footage and he goes over to the actual building and you'll see that there's no ladder in place um, in a previous post on both my twitter page as well as several other of my social media pages uh, we've confirmed that the telesteps ladder that we talked about earlier so just a note on that a lot of people were saying that their previous video where i talked about this ladder being law enforcement specific or law enforcement oriented um, I wasn't talking about telesteps in general. I was talking about telesteps, this specific model, which is their tactical model. Um, so that model, generally speaking, again, not seen at Home Depot and other places. I realize there are other models are, um, but that one is really oriented towards law enforcement and military. But back to the timeline itself, uh, as you can see there at 613, there's no ladder in place and they are having to use um, different pieces of building material uh, to actually get up on the roof. Eyes on, give me a ladder. City's on the way up. Yo, eyes up. Who's that, Matt? Yeah. I need some team stuff for Crump. Four on the ambulance service to the uh, stands. Keep eyes up, eyes up. Be on the way to the QRS are on their way to you as well. This building, the left one. Right That's what he's on. Go by the yellow crate. Butler. This oh, is a very serious incident. Very serious. That building, that one. Lay down. There's a gap in between. As soon as we get you get up here, you'll have perfect eyes on him. We just need a fucking ladder. Who's up there? Here, 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 here. We have a unit on the roof. We have a unit on the roof. We have a unit on the roof. Let's f*** open this thing. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. 
Continuing on with the footage at 6.16 and 20 seconds, that Telesteps letter does arrive on scene. Ironically, they don't use it as intended. At first, essentially, they just put it up on the little uh, cupboard that they were previously using. Eventually, they get it all figured out and uh, set in place as we have seen in previous videos. Now, before we move on with the body cam footage, a couple administrative notes. We do need to thank our main channel sponsor, and that is the folks over at Brownells. Uh, I don't know if they sell telesteps. However, they do sell all types of uh, ammunition, guns, optics, uh, gunsmithing supplies, lots of other great things that if you watch this channel, you probably like and are into. So definitely be sure to check out Brown Elves. Additionally, this is going to be a Mug Club episode. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, we do the free version here on YouTube and Rumble. Then we're going to head over to Mug Club and do exclusive content where several other creators are also creating content, uh, not just myself. And uh, today we're going to be talking about a few things. Number one, we're going to go over offset sights, uh, which we talked about in a previous video on the assassination attempt. And a lot of people had questions about them. So we're going to go over, um, you know, why he may have had them and then why they may have caused uh, some of the issues that we saw with the actual rounds impacting in various different locations, possibly, maybe. So we're going to be talking about that. And then additionally, we're going to be talking about Kamala Harris and her record on gun control um, and what we think that means for the election. So that will all be Mug Club exclusive. There should be a link here on your screen. If you guys are interested in checking that out, it should get you a free month as well with a discount code. Now, continuing on, we do have the Telesteps letter arriving. Again, they finally get it uh, set up correctly, probably two or three minutes after that. A Secret Service uh, member, presumably in the black suit arrives. He actually goes up on the roof so you guys can see uh, previous footage that we've had of him up there on the roof that is when he gets there so he's not arrived he rather he hasn't arrived to the scene until about six minutes after the actual shooting happens so uh, it tells you something about the secret service coverage that day uh, several reports have come out and said that there was three post standers which essentially are the guys who are on the outer perimeter um, that were assigned to that uh, event that day uh, from what I've been told by Dan Bongino and many other folks in the Secret Service who have been interviewed, typically for an event like that, you'd see somewhere between 10 to 15. So the delayed response by Secret Service uh, is in, um, an indicator that the reports of three are probably correct because it took him a little while to get there on scene. However, he did arrive. Um, and then uh, some interesting footage or commentary, I guess you could say, from the gentleman wearing the body camera, uh, the local police officer, at 6.22 and 30 seconds, he says, I effing told them they needed to post a guy. I thought you were on the roof. One, another officer says, another officer says, no, we were inside. Uh, just alluding to a few things. Number one, the confusion of what was going on with all the different departments and agencies that were there. Uh, additionally, uh, as we previously talked about, there was a SWAT team in the building that Crooks actually shot from. And unfortunately, there was not a sniper team in the building behind him. Uh, they had all been... Uh, repositioned, I guess you could say, by themselves, supposedly, um, down to the main entrance of the AGR building. I need 5036, 5030, start towards the farm shop. I f***ing told them they need to post the guy f***ing over here. To I told them that the f***ing, the Secret Service, I told them that f***ing Tuesday. I told them to post the guys over here. I have no contact with you. What? I thought you guys No. We're inside. Alpha One, Bravo One. Thank you. I told them to post f***ing guys over here. I wasn't even concerned about it because I thought someone was on the roof. Huh. I thought that's how we... Like, how now can you lose a guy walking back here? They were, they were, on the roof. They were inside. Why were we not... In the building. Because... You need to go somewhere over on the left side. Why weren't we? Because I thought we were going to post guys over here. I, I, I talked to the Secret Service guys. They're like, yeah, no problem. We're going to post guys over here. Fast forwarding to 6.27 p.m. here on the badge cam, we can see at least two plainclothes officers. Now, there's another video that came out uh, in between these videos, I guess probably, I think it was on the 20th or 21st, um, that showed essentially the front of the building uh, as it faced the stage where President Trump was speaking uh, before, during, and after uh, the shooting happened. And one thing you'll see is right after the shooting happens, three different plainclothes officers come from the west side of the building and they draw their weapons and Note the clothes that they're wearing. That's important here to what I'm about to get to here in just a second. They draw their handguns and they go through and clear the building, pointing weapons into the building that we have established that there was very likely other law enforcement in. Kill confirmed, he said. He said kill confirmed? He said kill, kill, kill confirmed.
So that is a, a gamble, if you will. Additionally, the fact that they pulled guns out after a shooting uh, where the president is located tends to make me believe that at least those officers, the ones in the plain clothes, believe that everyone on site knew that they were out there in plain clothes and knew or had a description of them. Now that's an interesting thing to ponder because uh, as you'll see in the footage, they're all wearing t-shirt and shorts as well as crooks. So is that the reason or one of the reasons possibly that the uh, snipers who were in position at the time that crooks started shooting and obviously had spotted him on the roof beforehand, at least at 608 from the badge cams that we have talked about here today. Um, and of course the Secret Service, Service Director or Acting Director, I guess you could say Ron Rose said that uh, at least 30 seconds prior, the actual Secret Service snipers knew that there was a bad guy on the roof and a threat on the roof. Um, but did they hesitate because they were dressed just like these three undercover officers were dressed? I don't know, uh, but it certainly is something to think about. And he definitely was dressed just like them in terms of shorts and t-shirts. So identical in terms of a uniform certainly could have caused someone to question. And after a few more minutes, this officer whose badge cam that we've been watching the majority of the time does go back over uh, to the little interrupted piece of roof between the two main buildings and is boosted up onto the roof. Yo, Tess, you got me up once. Give me up again. Ready? Ready? Yep. All right, buddy. Ready? Let's go. One, two, three. Yep. 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 He uh, gains access to the roof and moves up onto Crook's position. Now I can't roll any of that footage in because uh, YouTube nuked my video, uh, my last one, because it showed blurred footage, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, I should say. This video, this new, new video, which is over at my Twitter page, my Telegram page, and my Truth Social page, it's all over there for you guys to look at um, in the unedited and onboard ver version. Uh, shows a lot of interesting details, um, both about what's going on on the roof with uh, I guess we'll just say things that used to be in someone that are not in someone anymore. Additionally, details on the rifle itself, as well as details of different positions of items like shells and stuff like that. You can see it all in there. And again, unfortunately, I can't uh, show it here in YouTube because they nuked my video last time we did that. However, there's a couple other things I want to talk about here before we close the video out on YouTube and rumble and it comes from the diagram so uh, there's two sketches in there the after action report from the local police and uh, the first one there is at 605 so again very very important this is literally the minute apparently before both snipers that were in the building behind crooks uh, left their position so at 805 it has been reported that he was at a picnic table they have a location on here however that location doesn't actually fit the description as to what was texted out. So the text messages say uh, that he was within 50 yards, I believe, of the of the entrance. And the, the picnic table noted here doesn't fit that. So I'm not sure what to make of that yet. However, you can see there the direction of travel uh, that was in the text messages. That makes sense back to building number six, as you see it on the diagram here. And then again, like we talked about earlier, from both the officer who pulled up, who would have been to the east of this, um, from his radio traffic, as well as the report that someone was running on the roof, it makes sense that he was making uh, movements on the roof from building six to building one. That just makes sense to me based on everything we know and all the video footage that we have seen. Additionally, eyewitness uh, statements at the time said that they had him uh, climbing up on the roof in that position there on building number six. There's also a bunch of air conditioning ducts that were there at the time that apparently the FBI has since removed um, that he could have used to gain access. And again, that makes sense to me. However, note the positions of the snipers, both the BC ESU, which I have to believe is Beaver County, and then the Butler sniper. Uh, so two different units, apparently both of them left. Again, we have no footage as of right now uh, from Beaver County. So there is that. And then if we go to the next diagram here, you'll see uh, the, the crazy thing here, the thing that is just a tragedy of errors, if you will. Uh, so you'll see there that the Butler County Sniper in this diagram is still in position um, from 1806 to 1811. However, from what we know, um, based on you know the text communications that we have seen, uh, that's not the case at all. And you guys can see that one of the snipers as is actually noted there in blue out there near the entrance and that again as of what we know as of right now is greg nickel uh, you can see him he definitely matches his description uh, based on public interviews that he has given um, and unfortunately there was no snipers in there so 
that is where we have to have it. Unfortunately, guys, we're going to leave it there on YouTube and uh, Rumble. We have a ton of questions. I didn't go into everything. I just tried to keep everything high level. This video is already probably pretty long. It could be like a two hour long video, but I'm already losing my voice as well. Um, but yeah, so we're going to close it out there. Uh, again, if you guys want the latest and greatest on this stuff, I post it as soon as I get it over on all my various social media, obviously not the meta ones because we're heavily centered there, but all the other ones, uh, definitely check it out. That's the place where we post it as soon as we get it. We got some interesting news today that we posted uh, about the Iranian person of interest in this case uh, that we just posted today. So definitely check it out. Um, and if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button because unfortunately, I don't think this will be the end of it because we have so many more questions and things that simply don't make sense at this point. And uh, there's a lot of holes that we have to plug in this story. So make sure you hit the subscribe button for future videos. If you've done that and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, Make sure you sign up for my email at the website here on your screen. This email goes out once a month. It has all the videos since the previous month's email, so that way there's not a big tech giant censoring your eyes from my content. Additionally, we have a daily deals email. It's exactly like the name sounds. Uh, every day it goes out. It has the best deals that we find on guns, gear, ammo, accessories, etc. It has eight of the best ones that we find. If it is in the email on that given day, it's the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet. So that way, hopefully it saves you guys some time because I've done the price comparison and saves you some money as well. Additionally, we have a new service, the SMS service that you guys can sign up for at the website here. Uh, goes up once a day, either letting you guys know of a new video that went up or a great deal that we have found. And it goes straight from me into your phone so that way you don't have to worry about getting your computer or anything like that so that service is also available and with that guys we're going to close it out here on youtube and rumble and we're going to head over to mug club